This video is about dealing with bites which are very difficult to hit, and in particular those from small black bream. These are present throughout the Solent marks from late spring going into autumn. I fish easterly quite a bit, mainly on days when I'm collecting bait from tackle shops in Portsmouth, and I can't resist the urge to wet a line. Easterly is the part of the seafront closest to Hailing Island. I normally fish at the eastern end of the blocks, close to Fort Cumberland. The path between Fraser Range and South Sea Leisure Park gives easy access. Directly in front of Fraser Range is the Naturists area, so I tend to avoid this part. I generally only fish a couple of hours over high water using free hook flapper rigs or my clip down short snud bream rigs. The flapper rigs have size 4 Aberdeen hooks and the bream rigs have a chino style hook in either 4, 6s or 8s. During daytime sessions with clear water we are targeting black bream, schooly bass and the odd chance of getting red mullet and gurnards. They may not be big but at times you get plenty of action. It's interesting fishing which keeps you alert. Your rod tips are constantly tapping and it's a question of trying to work out how to and when to hit bites. Frustratingly, lots are missed. Black bream are notorious for nibbling or pecking at the bait and quite often it's very difficult to hit any bites at all. The larger bream will give more positive indications but it's not very often that you get these. So you're left with trying to figure out how to hit the smaller bites. Leaving them to develop doesn't work. They'll just keep pecking until they strip the bait off your hooks. When fishing for black bream I keep my rod tips high trying to keep as much line out of the water as possible, keeping a very tight line, using braid and I try to strike at the majority of bites. When I miss a bite I don't reel in but leave the fish another chance to have a go at the bait. Occasionally when you drag the bait the fish will take more positively but at other times uh, no matter what you try you just don't seem to be able to hit the bites at all. Standing up and being ready to pounce when you get a bite occasionally works. Quite often though the bites just seem far too fast to hit and you're sort of questioning your own ability and thinking that you're doing something completely wrong. After several missed bites on the same rod you do need to put it in and check your bait uh, and make sure that when you do rebait you're not leaving too much hanging over the, um, the bend of the hook um, and certainly making sure you're not masking the hook at all. Using ragworm tipped with squid the smaller fish will quite often take all your ragworm. Squid is a bit tougher so it stays on the hook a little bit longer but um, they still keep pecking at it until it disappears. Using short snuds you see all of your bites and have a chance to react. Although long snuds work well with schooly bass that's not the case with black bream. Most of my bites here in this session have been to the short snud rig. It's not to say that the long snud rig isn't working it's just that you're not seeing a large proportion of your bites. Distance fishing isn't always needed. You'll still get bites from black bream um, roughly 40 yards out. However, the short snud clip down rig does give you that option of fishing much further out if needed. I do quite a bit of bream fishing on Hailing Island and Milford Shingle Bank and although quite frustrating there are days when you do seem to hit quite a lot of your bites.
Most of the time, though, you'll get a long run of missed bites, and then all of a sudden, something comes together and you'll hit a few in a row. Double shots and even triple shots are not that uncommon. Missed by on the rod with long snoods, but I did get two red mullet and two tub gurnards on it a little bit later. Five out of the six bream I did catch in this session, however, fell to the short snood rig. up knowing that I'd missed far too many bites in this session and I was determined to come back on another occasion and try and sort that problem out. So when I came back a month later I was armed with rigs which are far more refined and really work well at hailing. These have short tube booms, 10 pound hook lengths uh, and hooks which are range from size 6 to size 12. Some have metal spring light tubes but the majority have plastic. They're all made up with three or four hook lengths but uh, a couple of them are made up as Wessex rigs. The pot and snood on these has a slightly stronger line and either size 4 or size 2 hook for fishing with crab. On this occasion though, I'm choosing one of the more conventional rigs for fishing small bits of ragworm and squid, just targeting small bream. To prevent damage to the booms, these rigs are stored on flat EVA rig winders. Since these are something different, I'll just run through how I make these rigs. So here are the two boom types. I don't know who makes these. But these are the ones which are spring-like. These plastic ones are made by Hyro. The orange bit on the end has holes for your rig line to pass through. You don't need to, but when constructing these rigs, I like to use micro beads either side of the booms. The sequins I favour for black bream are the holographic type use a clip with swivel for attaching the lead weight and these clips which carp anglers use um, to attach to my main line. A little bit of silicon tubing helps protect the knot at this end. These rigs need to be light so my main rig line is 26 pounds stern the hook lengths 
I use either 10 pound fluorocarbon um, at 0.22, this is fairly stiff line, or 8 pound triline. Again, this is fairly stiff. A hook tire is needed since the hooks used are lightweight spade end versions. I favour these silver Teclan hooks, but there's a variety of hooks which I'll use. Um, since I can't get hold of these anymore, um, different patterns. As long as they are small, um, somewhere between a 6 and a 12. A size 6 in one pattern isn't necessarily a size 6 in another. I start by preparing the hook lengths. The two lower snuds will have standard size 6 hooks and the top snud will have a smaller version. So these are for bream of reasonable size. At hailing, I'll go down to size 10s and size 12 hooks. You can still catch decent sized fish on these. You just have to be a little bit careful when playing them. And I have had undulates to over 10 pound on size 12 hooks. At this stage, I'd normally use saliva to wet the knot when pulling it tight. My hook lengths for these rigs are normally measured to be either 25 or 30 centimetres in length. A stop knot is tied above the sequin. This acts as a bait stop. To keep the rig very light, I wouldn't normally use beads. Naturally, the tag ends of all knots are cut. The hook length is then threaded up the plastic tube boom. It doesn't matter what type of knot you use at the end, as long as it's large enough to secure the hook length. I then like to use slightly thicker line for a stop knot at the other end of the tube. Again, all tag ends are cut to make this very neat. The three hook lengths of snuds are now ready to be assembled onto the main rig line. I'm measuring this out at 130 centimetres. This gives me plenty of options to be able to move the snuds around on the rig whilst fishing. I first tie on the lead clip and someone very kindly pointed out to me that this is a grinner knot that I use and it's just a question of threading on the components in sequence bead followed by boom followed by bead when all the booms are on I attach the clip which is used to attach to the main line having first threaded up the silicon tubing again I prefer to use a grinner knot in this position the silicon tubing protects the knot and helps prevent the top snud from tangling with the clip. Now it's just a question of tying stop knots to fix the booms in position. I isolate the middle one, dealing with that one first. This will be positioned in the middle of the rig. The other two booms will be equally spaced either side of it, between the middle boom and the two clips. These of course will just be starting positions and positions for storing the rig. Um, when actually fishing though I'll be moving these around depending on what happens. So it's important to use stop knots and not crimps. Of course you can use power gum but I mean I just prefer to use the same line as I use for my rig body. It is fiddly and time consuming but it keeps the rig very light and very flexible. I do like these flat rig winders for storage. They take up far less space than the circular ones 
and of course with these plastic booms um, the circular ones would be no good. You don't want the plastic bending out of shape or breaking. The slots make it very easy for winding the line on and keeping it all neat. And at a push you could probably get two rigs on the same winder. Here's another situation where stop knots are better than crimps. A mat pin is used to keep the top clip in place. The rig clip is just pushed underneath the rig line. A very neat and compact way of storing these rigs. So back to the fishing. With these rigs I like to use either pyramid leads or these star leads. This isn't the rig I've just made but a well used one so it's not in pristine condition. The ragworm I'm using has been kept cool, but it's not been up against any ice packs. Given the small hooks I'm using, they're a little bit big for my liking. So I've selected a smaller one. I'm threading it up the hook, then snipping off the bottom half of the worm. sliver of squid, which has already been cut, is then used to tip off. Ragworm is put back in a cool bag to prevent it from drying up. So, pretty much the same setup as before, however, I've swapped the long snood rig for this more refined and much finer boom rig. Will it be enough to make a difference though? Will I be hitting more bites? <laughs> or will I still be as frustrated as before? Well, I started when the tide was already ebbing and I didn't take much footage of this session. However, this rig did seem to make a slight difference. I did seem to get a lot more bites and proportionally I seemed to hit a lot more than before. and one or two of the bream seem to be of better quality. I ended up with nine bream in total and another one of my tricks seemed to work well today um, and that's using double tentacle on the top snud. That's on both rigs. And to cap it all, although this is not very big, my first ever turbot at Eastney. <laughs> 